welcome to our youtube channel this is Rukit Ajobo and this is Market Digest Nigeria this is the part two of our previous topic on how recession has affected Nigeria so we're going to start with recession so what's recession recession is when an economy declines significantly for at least six months with the fall with the drop in the following five economic indicators which are real GDP income employment manufacturing and retail. In Nigeria, the National Bureau of Statistics reported that in the first quarter of 2016, the nation's GDP grew by minus 0.36% in real term. This was lower by 2.47 points from growth recorded in the preceding quarter and also lower by 4.32 points from the corresponding quarter of 2016. Quarter on quarter, the real GDP slowed by 13.71%. Officially launching Nigeria into recession, we will begin our analysis by looking deeper in the past most recent administration. When Obasanjo took over office in May 1999, foreign reserve was about $4 billion. FDI into Nigeria that year was about $1 billion. Obasanjo privatized most government agencies and companies and the administration racked in billions of dollars from both non-refundable bidding prices and outright purchases. He launched the GSM and increased Nigeria's reserve to $102 million foreign reserve and excess crude account. Having a large foreign currency reserve is an important indicator of a country's ability to repay foreign debt for currency defense and also used for credit ratings which ultimately attract foreign investors. The increased foreign reserve in turn defended the local currency and the Naira started to appreciate. When Professor Soludo became governor of Central Bank in 2004, Naira was 147 Naira to a dollar and by the time he was leaving in 2009, the Naira had appreciated to 117 Naira to a dollar. The late President Musa Yaradwaz then increased Nigeria's reserve to an all-time high of 62 billion. Economically, he performed well, but it wasn't all rosy with Obasanjo. He squandered an opportunity to improve the Nigerian economy by resuscitating the near-dead power sector. He was involved in a $16 billion power corruption. Parliamentary hearing, which took place between 11 and 12 March 2008, revealed that Mr. Bernard Mason, the chief executive officer of a German firm, Lameya, was paid 370 million naira just for a feasibility study on a power station which was expected to generate 2,600 megawatts of electricity. He also confessed that he had never visited the site of the Namibia hydroelectric power project in Taraba State. The only headway that seemed to have been made so far was the discovery of about 2,500 containers of imported power equipment worth about $5 billion at the Lagos port. The containers had been abandoned and the demurrage generated by the abandoned equipment was being put at over 4 billion naira. When Jonathan assumed office, he decreased the asset, increased debt, and at the same time, external revenue was decreasing, which was largely due to insecurity in the north and brazen corruption fueled by tribalism. This greatly affected the economy. As the U.S. produced more oil, they started cutting down on oil imports from Nigeria. Nigeria started to take the heat and missed the growing belief that the economy was healthy. The economy had been in a steady decline since 2011. Foreign direct investment had been reducing and most of the companies must have been following the country's balance sheet and, and security situations. An in-house economist and consultant's warning of the dangers ahead. By 2012, Jonathan's government has started borrowing 
which further compounded Nigeria's problem and the country's balance sheet. By the time Jonathan was leaving, external reserve had been reduced to 31 billion. Excess crude account was empty. He had increased Nigerian's debt as confirmed by Okonji Iwela by $21.8 billion to reach $36.7 billion. External earnings as a percentage of the GDP was 18%. Excess crude oil sales were diverted into private pockets that eventually ended in foreign banks. The borrowing of dollars was used for recurrent expenditures, salaries and travels, and they also ended up in people's pockets and flooded the economy. However, Jonathan had arguably one of the best economic policy directions compared to previous administrations which includes signing into law the Nigerian oil and gas industry content. Development Bill 2010, which has increased local content in the oil and gas sector. Nigerian's banking industry was rescued and stabilized by the establishment of the Assets Management Company of Nigeria, ACOM, in the year 2010. Good luck, Jonathan's administration was behind the revival of the almost dead automotive industry in Nigeria. He was also behind the revival of the Komatos Railway System, the Amajiri System of Education in the academically disadvantaged northern part of the country, as well as the introduction of the cashless policy. When Buhari initially came into power, he met and compounded an already bad situation just by his inaction, or rather, a lack of clarity on his policy direction. Stock markets, FDI, and commerce rely to a large degree on information. Also, research shows that FDI and stock prices appear to drift after important events. This suggests that investors may react or overreact to unobserved stimuli. According to economists, there is an attitude to invest gap between present reality and future expectation. This gap can be greatly influenced by a perceived well-taught macroeconomic and development plan. Such a situation was evident just hours after President Trump's most popular speech to date. The Dow Jones Industrial Average soared above 21,000 for the first time in history, boosting the stock market to nearly $3 trillion. Before the President Buhari's led government came on board, Inflation level was 9%. Today, inflation has doubled to more than 18%. Nigerian economist argues that Nigeria's forex policy, especially its decision not to adjust the exchange rate in line with the forces of demand and supply, led to the acute shortage of foreign currencies in the country. The CBN had kept the exchange rate at 199 Naira per dollar for 16 months from February 2015 to June 2016. Some argue that the ban on the 41 items and the resulting scarcity of Forex generally have made many companies to visit the parallel market for their Forex needs. This, they explain, was the foundation of the huge gap between the official market and parallel market exchange rates. The only problem with the recession as a readjustment process is that it can take years and some industry sector may be left behind by it. Company profits and productivity will fall. Federal and state governments with less revenue coming in cut back on the very programs that might caution the economics blow. The weakening of the currency, real estate and stock prices, which can linger for years. But to see recession in such an exclusive negative term suggests a misunderstanding of what a recession is. Recession helps to write economies that have lost touch with reality.
For Nigeria, it is the belief that it can rely on oil revenue alone forever. The recession has reduced inefficiency, imbalance, and dangerous level of risk out of the market. It has reduced the trade deficit and created a window to rebuild infrastructure. It imports far more than its exports, creating an imbalance that has worried experts for a generation. But as the economy weakens in a recession, the value of the Naira drops and household budgets shrinks. So we buy less from abroad and the deficit narrows. At the same time, the weak Naira helps our exports, further shrinking the gap. Currently, there have been duties imposed on certain agricultural commodities since 2012, especially with rice and sugar. This has prompted a state-led push to improve local staple crop production and stability. To that end, the government plans implement measures to achieve self-sufficiency and become a net exporter of certain agricultural items like rice, tomato paste, and wheat. Fiscal diversification involves increasing tax revenues from non-oil sectors to reduce the reliance on oil revenues for financing spending. Oil-related receipts continue to dominate budget revenues to about 80% of the total revenue in 2014. Non-oil revenue remained largely unchanged as a share of non-oil GDP at about 3.3% over the past four years to 2014. Nigeria is a low-taxed economy compared to its peers. We estimate tax to GDP at 8% is the second lowest in Africa and fourth lowest in the world. Introduction of a plea bargain system that enables officials to return stolen funds to avoid persecution and a structural reform program for the oil and gas sector have been unsuccessful attempt to restructure the NNPC. The government has taken more deliberate steps to reform this institution in view of cost saving that could accrue from running a more efficient institution. The most impactful has been the Agricultural Transformation Agenda, which implemented a set of initiatives to improve competitiveness in the agricultural sector and reduce reliance on imports. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. See you same time next week. Bye.